Let us all rejoice in the Lord and keep a festival in honor of Saint Philip, our patron. Let us join with the angels in joyful praise to the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Very warm welcome to this Mass. Today, as the entrance antiphon says, we are celebrating the solemnity of Saint Philip Howard, um, one of the martyrs of the Reformation, and the patron of our diocese. So during this Mass, we pray especially for all those who are still persecuted for their faith, and we also thank the Lord for the gift of the church in this diocese, and pray for the Lord to pour his blessings upon us all. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have honored the church with the victorious witness of Saint Philip Howard, our patron, who died for his faith. As he imitated the sufferings and death of the Lord, may we follow in his footsteps and come to eternal joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction. Great will be their blessing be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like a gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through their stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be a rock of refuge for me, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Into your hands, Into your hands O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. As for me, I trust in the Lord. Let him be glad and rejoice in your love. Into, Into your, your hands, hands O Lord, Lord, I, I commend, commend my, my spirit. spirit. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Into your, Into your hands, hands Lord, O Lord, I commend, I commend my, my spirit. spirit. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are only the earthen jar that holds his treasure to make it clear that such an overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. We are in difficulties on all sides, but never cornered. We see no answer to our problems, but never despair. We have been persecuted, but never deserted. Knocked down, but never killed. Always, wherever we will be, we carry with us in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus, too, may always be seen in our body. Indeed, while we are still alive, we are consigned to our death every day for the sake of Jesus, so that in our mortal flesh the life of Jesus, too, may be openly shown. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But as we have the same spirit of faith that is mentioned in Scripture, I believed and therefore I spoke, we too believe and therefore we too speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this in our, is, is for your benefit so that the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving will be to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are those the Lord be who are persecuted in the cause of Christ. There is the kingdom well of heaven. In the name of the Father, alleluia. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Beware of men. They will hand you over to their Sanhedrins and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the pagans. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how to speak or what to say. What you are to say will be given to you when the time comes, because it is not you who will be speaking. The Spirit of your Father will be speaking in you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all men on account of my name, but the man who stands firm to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> St. Philip Howard, Earl of Arundel, would have been the fifth Duke of Norfolk had his father not been beheaded in 1572 for conspiring to marry, to marry Mary, Queen of Scots, and been involved in the Rodolphi plot and in the Northern Rising. The title was restored to Philip Howard's grandson. At a dinner I attended some years ago, the present Duke of Norfolk remarked that losing your title and your head was an occupational hazard of being Duke of Norfolk. Philip Howard lost his title, and if not beheaded, he was left to die in the Tower of London. In 1585, he was set up by the government in a sting, fined £10,000 and sent to the Tower. In 1588, 
he was accused of praying for the success of the Spanish Armada, tried and sentenced to death, but returned to imprisonment in the tower. He was told that if he would go but once to the Church of England, he would be restored to family, estates, and all the honours befitting the premier Earl of the realm. It was not a denial of his faith that he was prepared to make. He died in the tower after 10 years of continuous imprisonment. You can see the family's unshakable belief in the Catholic faith in our own church of St. Edward the Confessor. In 1911, Philip Howard's descendant, the second Baron Howard of Glossop, vacationed in Warpleston Rectory. His daughter, Muriel, became extremely ill, and in thanks for her recovery, he presented the Reredos to St. Edward's Church, where it still stands today. A Reredos is a large altarpiece or decoration behind, placed behind the altar in a church. Baron Howard's great-grandson is the present Duke of Norfolk. St. Edward's Church itself was designed by the Duke of Norfolk's architect, Charles Alban Buckler. Buckler was responsible for the remodelling of Arundel Castle, you see today. Being one of the first English residences to be fitted with electric light, integral firefighting equipment and central heating. It would have been pleasant if he had installed those facilities at St. Edward's Church. When our diocese was separated out from the Diocese of Southwark, it needed a focal point. What better focal point than the church in Arundel, built by the family of Philip Howard? And we here, we have a direct parish link with the family of the, our Darson patron, a church built by the family's architect, a reredos donated by his descendant. More important, though, is what we gain individually from the character of our co-patron. One of the highest in the land, he sought the true faith and having been converted, suffered for it. The beckoning attractions of family, estates, status, royal favour and a quiet life could not entice him from the 10 years of misery in the tower by the simple act of attending one religious service in whose faith he did not believe. Better to die alone, imprisoned, friendless, and separated from family than that. From the Reredos and the brass plaque in St. Edward's Church, we might reflect that for all the grandeur of the, of the premier peerage and estates, it was to a simple country church in our own parish that his descendants sought and was granted the healing of one of his children. So what better patrons could there be for our diocese, Our Lady and St. Philip Howard, our Lady is the mother of the church, and St. Philip Howard, Earl of Arundel, whose family has given us a cathedral in which to centre our faith. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept this offering of praise and peace in memory of your martyr, Saint Philip. May it bring us your forgiveness and inspire us to give you thanks now and forever. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, 
be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, 
Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Elena Clark, for whom this Mass is offered, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant her and all the dead, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I tell you solemnly, unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord, we receive your gifts from heaven at this joyful feast. May we who proclaim at this holy table the death and resurrection of your Son come to share his glory with Saint Philip and all your holy martyrs. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.